Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Fort Mill Town Council regular meeting for August the 8th. Uh, we would love if you have a phone or a device that might ring or go off on you, please turn it to silent so that we can give you our full attention and you ours. Thank you for joining us. We will stand for our Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing each of us to this meeting. Thank you for the work that you place before us, and thank you for giving us the wisdom to do the business of the town in the best way possible for all people. We thank you for all things. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Council members, you have been provided the minutes for the July 25th town council meeting. Are there any changes, deletions, or additions? Here and now, I move to approve. Okay. We have a motion to approve. I'll second that. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thank you. Public comment. Pursuant to Section 2-46 of the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Fort Mill, any citizen of the town may appear before council for the purpose of providing public comments on any municipal matter except personnel matters. Those who wish to speak must sign in outside of council chambers prior to the start of the meeting. Citizens will be given three minutes uh, each to speak. Davey, do we have anyone signed in? No, Mayor, we do not. Okay. And if each of you forgive me on the peppermint, but I got a sinus thing that just won't go away. All right, uh, we will move directly into presentations. Uh, we have a proclamation that's very near and dear to me. Um, we will be making this proclamation for the Fort Mill High School softball team state champions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go Jackets. Town of Fort Mill. And Chuck, I'll have you come up to receive this in a minute, and your players if they'd like. Whereas the Fort Mill High School softball team is comprised of an amazing group of players and coaches that we are proud to have represent our hometown. And whereas the team clinched a co-region championship and a number one overall seed in the Class 5A playoffs by defeating one of their rivals on the road in the last regular season game of the year, and Whereas the team continued their journey with three wins in the district bracket and another three wins in the upper state bracket to make their way to the Class 5A state championship. And whereas the team battled back after a game one loss to win back-to-back -back games with the final game being won with a score of 4-2 to two to clinch the South Carolina High School League 5A state softball championship. Now, therefore, I, Gwen Savage, along with the Fort Mill Town Council, do hereby proclaim the day of August the 8th, 2022, as Fort Mill High School Softball Team State Champions Day. All right. The coach of this team um, grew up with me. And I've known him since so kids throwing dirt daubers and riding with mini bikes, which became I-77, right? Yes. Um, but uh, it was a, quite a blessing for you guys to have Chuck as your coach because he's invested a tremendous amount of his heart and his efforts towards making sure the right people were on the field at the right time. And we are so proud of you guys. I am. I played softball, but not like you do. Um, but we really, really couldn't be more proud and say thank you from the entire council yes. and the entire community for what you did to honor us. So thank you so very much. Jeff? <laughs> They're skinny. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Ladies, it's probably worth noting that four members of this council 
actually graduated from Fort Mill High as well. So you also have a significant alumna here, right. as well as um, <laughs> the, five, 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 five. plus Davey, plus Chris, yeah. So um, a lot of us followed those halls, but y'all were not at the hall. <laughs> this one, we only had one high school and one telephone. Thank you, girls. Thank Great you. Go Jackets. Woo. Thank you. So, Chris, you're the oddball, I guess. Again. He frequently reminds me. Yeah, just for me. <laughs> He's special. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Alrighty. I got a dollar Now we will move to presentation number two, Storm Drain Art Project, Mina McDonald. Hi, Council. Hi. I'm Mina. It's nice to see all of y'all um, here representing our wonderful Storm Water Department to tell you about an exciting project that we're bringing back. Uh, this is something that the department had originally started planning in 2019 and of course we all know what happened next mm -hmm. and everything sort of got um, put on the back burner so I'm going to catch you guys up on some things that we're working on. First off, just a general what is stormwater. Um, stormwater is any water that falls from the sky and hits the ground and then it's what happens to that stormwater after it hits the ground that we're talking about. So it's really the stormwater runoff. Where does it go? How are we handling that in our community? And how are we educating the public about it? Because a lot of people, adults and kids, do not understand that when it goes into those storm drains, it's going untreated, uncleaned, straight to our waterways. So with that, um, why is this important? This is a public education campaign that we'll be doing um, that's involving not only our general population, general public, student education, working with our Fort Mill School District. It's going to involve public art and uh, the work of some of our public um, <coughs> artists here. We've got Debbie in the room from Olive's Mud Puddle, and then Lori is here with us from the um, Arts Council of York County. And it's going to be a conversation starter. It's going to be something that's going to be in a location here in Fort Mill that is very well traveled, that a lot of people will see, and hopefully that will help us um, get the word out to a lot of folks. So the first piece of this project is the student art project. And this is something that's going to be open to all of our K-12 to students uh, that are zoned in the Fort Mill schools, something that we've already um, started working on with the new STEAM coordinator, Holly, and the new science coordinator, Greg, there at the school district. So they're all on board. We will have this um, go out to the schools, get out in front of the kids this fall, and then encourage them to enter the art project competition piece of it. Any questions on any of that part? Okay. Then that art is going to be used by our local artist to create a uh, mural that is going to be installed at Kingsley. So this mural is something that will be um, taking inspiration from the student artwork, but it'll be a cohesive mural design. So this uh, project is bringing together a lot of different groups and organizations here in our community. So um, not only is Kingsley going to be the, the host site and location for us, Fort Mill Schools, Olives, the Catawba River Art Guild, the Arts Council of York County, Catawba Riverkeeper has said they want to get involved with us, um, and actually also York County Stormwater um, and the Water and Soil Conservation Group are coming uh, to meet with me this week and they're excited to be a part of this project too. So Kingsley is our location. Um, we were really excited that they agreed, not only um, agreed, but were so enthusiastic about being the host location for this mural installation. So they've agreed to host it along a pedestrian corridor, which means that unlike some other um, storm drain <laughs> art where it's in the road or it's on a, a storm drain that's on a curb, this is going to be in a completely pedestrian location. It's going to be very safe and walkable for folks. So it's an incredibly traveled area. I'm sure all of us have been <laughs> to Kingsley. Uh, this is that little uh, public space that's between Napa and Taco Milano, and it leads down to their stormwater pond. So installation weekend, we're not gonna have to close any streets. We are gonna coordinate off so that people aren't walking through the artists' workways. Um, but this is a great opportunity for us to be able to you know, have some information set up about it while it's being installed and really interact with the public. 
So the mural location specifically would start at that storm drain that was in the last picture and flow down these steps to the stormwater pond. And it really gives the chance to tell the story of stormwater um, very visually for folks as it is leading to a stormwater pond. And the infrastructure there in Kingsley uh, really lends itself to this. And Kingsley also um, was very kind in that in their landscaping areas, they said we could put signage. They will be happy to install some signage for us that would really sort of have some interpretive signs with about the artwork itself, about the artists who installed it, that kind of thing. So really excited about that. Um, some just general logistics, obviously there's a lot more logistics to, to go, but the town will provide all the supplies, like the paint, the concrete sealer, um, all of that, brushes, rollers. Um, we are going to seek donations, uh, see if there's any local groups or organizations that want to help us with that. Um, the Arts Council said that they do have a, a mini grant that we can apply for as well, so we'll be looking into that. Kingsley's team is going to power wash the mural areas, and then we are going to prep those areas with the concrete primer. Um, the completed art will then be sealed after installation to try to prevent any uh, damage and to extend its, its lifespan. Um, Kingsley will have the ability to remove the artwork at if, if at any time it's looking dingy, <laughs> but uh, they are <laughs> going to let us know well in advance of that, um, and we're hoping that the lifespan of the art will be um, a few years, two to three years at, at um, without touch-ups and then we'll have the ability to add touch-ups if we want to keep it longer. So there's a little bit of the timeline for y'all to see that the student artwork piece of it this fall, um, the design of the mural with the artists uh, in the early part of 2023 with installation at that Earth Day weekend. Uh, we will have a rain date planned for that uh, in, just in case of inclement weather. Future plans, we're hoping that this can be a project that we can do annually, um, that is something that can expand to additional locations. Uh, there's a, a possibility of expansion in Kingsley itself, but then we've got uh, all through the community that we can look at. I know any of y'all who were around in 2019, uh, you'll remember they were looking at Railroad Avenue, so we're hoping that maybe in the future we'll be able to bring a little bit of this closer to the downtown Fort Mill area. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Does anybody have any questions? I want to compliment you for a beautiful presentation. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic opportunities for partnership. We like partnerships, mm -hmm. and I think the partners that you have will definitely uh, provide a, a wonderful structure for this to be successful. It's so much better than it was in 2019. Are you at the lead for this? Yes, I'll be the, the lead um, staff person working with Leanne um, on, on this and then coordinating the different pieces of the, the puzzle with everybody. You can't go wrong with Debbie. You know, she's our <laughs> resident. <laughs> I was saying, we, should, we need to put her on retainer at this point. But. And the fact that her um, place of business is a mud puddle when you're doing storm water, it just kind of goes <laughs> hand in hand, you know? I, mean, I couldn't have planned that one much better. Yeah. Um, I think it would be, I can't wait to see what the students provide. Mm -hmm. And they Chris Sardelli, if we can share that on our website too, that will drive more traffic. And I think it's important to put the context to why we're doing this. It's not mm -hmm. just pretty. It's for, right. it's just for a reason that's very important. It, and it's also important in town. You know, if you ever have a big heavy rainstorm and you drive through it, you see lots of water <coughs> coming off of them like boats and jet skis. Mm -hmm. It's because storm drains stopped up. Mm -hmm. um, icy conditions. There are really many reasons to do this. But I love the partnership. I love the artwork. The presentation was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to have uh, this public artwork piece. And one thing that um, I didn't mention, the area with the steps, we have this opportunity to really create sort of an interactive moment in the mural mm. so that people could sit on the steps and be a part of that watershed and, of course, take their selfies. Oh, um, and then hashtag, put it, you know. <laughs> so it'll be something that will really hopefully have an interactive component for people who are there as well. I think it's also important not only for us to promote what storm water is and what we do, but also some of the negative of it so I know we do several campaigns throughout the year about not breaking your leaves into the mm -hmm. drains and all of that just making sure that that's as visual yeah. to everybody as the pretty side of what you're doing because right. um, they need to know that the big splashing up on Tom Hall uh, isn't 
supposed to be that way and how they can fix it themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the more you can pull people <clears throat> in, the better. So. Right. Yeah, right. we've got a lot of um, fun volunteer opportunities, too, around some of that that y'all are talking about. But that'll be a different presentation. Wonderful. <laughs> Please keep us posted. We appreciate the schedule. Excited. And we're, we're excited about it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. There are no old business items, so we will move directly into new business items. New business item number one, public hearing and first reading. An ordinance amending the zoning ordinance for the Town of Fort Mill, Article 1, in general, Section 5A, establishment of districts so as to add a new zoning district to be called the TGOD, Town Gateway Overlay District, and Article 2 requirements by district so as to add a new section to be called section 30 TGOD town gateway overlay district to provide for a public hearing and to provide for other matters relating thereto. I will open the public hearing at this point. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Hearing none we will close the public meeting. Now uh, we will commence with first reading. Chris Pettit is our subject matter expert. Anything? Mayor, mm -hmm. um, this, um, this overlay would allow for the town to... Um, this one. Is this the one we have further questions that we were asking? Yes, Mayor. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Um, I'd, I'd like to make a motion for new business item number one to defer it back to committee for further research. Do we need to vote on that, Barry? We do, don't we? Okay. I have a motion to refer this back to committee. There were a number of questions that unfortunately we were unable to get answered prior to this reading. Uh, so I need a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you so much. Sorry for the confusion, but it is a timely matter. Thank you. New business item number two, public hearing and first reading, an ordinance to establish the standards for the placement of small wireless facilities in the town of Fort Mill, South Carolina, and matters related thereto. Chris Pettit is our subject matter expert. I will open the public hearing at this time. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this matter? No one? We will close the public hearing. Chris? Mayor, the state of South Carolina adopted a new law that basically outlines um, the rights that uh, telecommunication companies have with installing small cell wireless facilities within road rights of ways. Um, municipalities have very little control over that, um, what you can and can't uh, require as far as that, but to the extent that you are able to have some control over this, uh, the Municipal Association of South Carolina has developed a model ordinance that outlines everything in line with state law uh, and in line with what you are as a municipality allowed to control. Um, so staff has taken that model ordinance and um, amended it to basically fit uh, the mold of the town of Fort Mill. Now I say that there were probably two blanks in it that we got to control. Um, and so we have taken all steps that we can to maximize our ability to control small cell wireless facilities within the road rights of ways. But again, pretty much uh, the state has said that they have almost free reign um, to place small cell wireless facilities anywhere within the road right of way. Now this is not anything talking about on private property that's a whole separate uh, ordinance whole separate discussion but this is just within road rights of ways um, the the area that we do have control is in our historic district uh, which we do have a historic preservation overlay district in the downtown area and in our design districts which are our mixed-use districts um, and several districts that we have um, covered by development agreements where we have design requirements in those areas, we do have a say of what these facilities look like. Um, and so we've maximized our ability to take advantage of that. Otherwise, um, it's really up to the cell companies to decide what they look like. Um, you see them a lot 
throughout uh, the outskirts of the township, uh, but there's uh, currently not, not that I know of any within the town limits of Fort Mill. Um, but we do uh, frequently get contacted by companies wanting to put these up, so I would imagine as soon as the ordinance passes, um, you're likely to start seeing these pop up. And of time. The, the benefit is that it provides better cell coverage um, in areas of, of dense need. So uh, there is a public benefit to them. Um, there is just, you know, the, the, the look of them and the additional polls that may come from them. So um, with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions from council? Hearing none, uh, shortened version is uh, we're being forced to allow the installation of these towers to benefit the uh, companies providing wireless services, and it is intended to help customers, um, but, you know, it certainly adds to the congestion of poles and wires and, and such, so uh, it's not something we invited or necessarily want, but we've written into the areas that we can um, some control measures that hopefully will help inside the town in the historic district, correct? That's correct, ma'am. All right. No questions? Um, I think we need to vote. I need a motion. Make a motion we approve new business item number two. I'll second. We we'll have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, <coughs> it's unanimous. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate that. New business item number three, public hearing and first reading, an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance for the Town of Fort Mill, Article 4, Administration Enforcement Penalties and Fees, Section 4.4, Mobile Food Vendors, to amend the requirements for mobile food vendors <coughs> to provide for a public hearing to provide for other matters relating thereto. Chris is again our subject matter expert. I will open the public meeting at this time, public hearing at this time. And crickets. All right. Close the public meeting at this time. Um, Chris? Mayor, um, the town adopted our first mobile food vendor, aka food truck, ordinance. I believe it was back in 2019. Uh, at the time, we had maybe one food truck. Uh, and I'm going to say food truck instead of mobile food vendor because it's just easier, but I'm using them interchangeably. Um, at the time we had one food truck and um so the, the the trend of food trucks within the town of fort mill was really just getting started and so we established <coughs> at that time an ordinance that that gave uh, council and staff control over um, where they could operate and and uh, provide a lot of operational uh, requirements to to help manage them again they were new they were unknown we didn't really know how it was going to play out within the town well a few years goes by and now they're everywhere mm -hmm. and so um, we have uh, rewritten the ordinance to adapt to that um, we have uh, written it in such a way that we're trying to um, create something that's easier not only on the staff here as far as enforcement and, and permitting and things of that nature but also on the food truck businesses uh, as well as on the the property owners so uh, we wanted to make something that's easier to understand in today's context easier to enforce in today's context um, and something that uh, we we as staff have a little better control over um, the current ordinance the way it's written um, it, it was kind of vague as far as where food trucks could operate and where they could not. Our current, uh, our proposed draft in the uh, staff report is is much clearer. Uh, we've taken some notes from some regional jurisdictions to provide some regional cohesiveness as far as um, where they are allowed to operate. Uh, that'll help in some of the, the code enforcement and compliance issues that we've had, but uh, uh, some of the biggest pieces are, uh, I, I think the process is just so much easier in that in the past, the food truck business had to not only get approval for their truck, but also get approval for where they were going to operate. Uh, the way the 
alternate draft in your packet is written is such that food trucks worry about food trucks and making sure that they're safe and they can operate safely and businesses and property owners um, come in and they get approval for if they want a food truck to operate on their property uh, they come in and they get that part of the approval so it's it's sort of creating two separate approved lists um, and um, from the staff perspective that makes it easier on us to know that anybody in this bucket of approved trucks can operate in any of these approved uh, property locations uh, and so from an enforcement standpoint we feel much better about enforcing that um, safety is still a number one priority so there's still safety regulations in there uh, still have to uh, adhere to all of the business licensing requirements the hospitality taxing requirements and things of that nature uh, but overall staff feels like this is a step forward in the realm of so many food trucks and so much activity um, just an overall better ordinance for us to uh, uh, be able to have in the town and with that i'm happy to answer any questions i think one of the most important things we can point out is it's really and truly not about enforcements and guidelines and this and that it's about ensuring that people that come into the town to do business with our residents are protected uh, by having those inspections so that the truck doesn't catch on fire or you know there's something that would harm our residents uh, the location so that's that's the reason we are in, in a process because initially you were right we had one mm. uh, now we have a preponderance of them and people seem to love them but we have to have time to catch up to that and identify the ways that we can make them safer and that's the reason for the written word uh, and the ordinance. And I really appreciate you separating the location from the truck. That's a smart idea, a very good idea. Council members, do you have questions for Chris? I think it eliminates a lot of the gray area between it. So like I said, two defined lists and everything. Now that obviously that does not apply to town events, correct? Town sponsored events? Town sponsored events. There's a section in there, uh, subsection F. Uh, which basically on town sponsored events or town property we we have a little more control over i mean we have ultimate control over uh, the food trucks that operate within those so but they'll um, still pass the fire they codes. still yeah, absolutely they yeah, still have to meet all the safety and operational requirements but um we we control those events so we control you know yeah there's no leeway given aspect. because it's right, our right. event if anything it would be more restrictive correct and i would like to think for events um that we've held we have been very particular in which food vendor we have offered the opportunity uh to serve so uh nothing that would be lessened because it was a town <coughs> event instead of just a, a in the community event and mayor i'd like to say since we've uh, started back our events um a little over well about a year ago uh in walter wildlife park uh, every one of our food vendors have has town permits and has had uh, provided inspections from our um fire marshals they've passed all of the inspections they've had their DHEC license so that we've been more restrictive uh than most anyone in town so um we we we've had to really use a small group of um food vendors because we knew that they passed all of the inspections and, and again it's not punitive it's for the right. health and safety of the people using that service yes so um you know i hope we'll continue yes ma'am to and be strict I, just, uh, Mr. Garrison has an example um, in a typical sense uh, there's a maximum number of food vendors at any given time one food vendor can operate on any given property right. obviously a town event you know strawberry festival we have 10 mm -hmm. um, typically the food vendors uh, required to be in control of cleaning up their garbage well at the strawberry festival town staff does that so I mean it's, it's just a different ball game with town events and town sponsored events and town approved events so um, the, the requirements <coughs> differ and it's a case-by-case -case basis but we we have a process built in for that well i'm sure the, the businesses that follow all the rules and everything they, they appreciate the more stringent requirements and guidelines mm -hmm. uh, so I, I definitely think it's a, it, it's a it's a good way to go yeah it, it's just the same that you couldn't open your front door and sell dinner on your porch anyway. yeah you, you're just not allowed to do that so um, right. I, I think there's always the need to refresh and 
um, <coughs> increase our review of all of our policies and processes, and this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so under four, um, let's see, I don't have my reading glasses here. Uh, you want mine? The hospitality tax regulations, 4B. So if, I know that they've all, you know, if you're getting a business license and they're in the park, but I mean, how, what kind of enforcement, if there's something that just happened to go into a neighborhood like Waterside, I'm just going to pick on that one. They have, I hear they're down there all the time. And I know we don't have somebody riding, you know, we can't have somebody patrolling every single food truck that no, goes into I mean, a neighborhood. I mean, certainly you're not going to catch everybody. Right. I mean, you're just not. When they have wheels, you're not. But right. Right. Um, one of the reasons why we've separated the property owners from the, the food trucks is, is because we can typically always find the property owners. So I, I don't want to pick on our neighborhood, but if a business starts inviting food trucks to come and, and you know hasn't gotten approval, well, I know where to find that business owner right. um, and, and inform them of the rules and regulations and why we have them and, and yeah. get them in compliance. And so um, you know the way we've kind of separated it out, it, it makes it a lot easier for us to try and maintain as much compliance as possible, but you, 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 you will never get every single right. one of them. And for the hospitality tax, it's not just a frivolous tax. It's right. something that we use to ensure that we can provide the means through hospitality, such as a food truck or a restaurant or whatever, because it's storm drains. You know, we don't want food trucks pulling up and dumping their grease mm -hmm. uh, into a storm drain. So we have to have means for funding the types of activities that are required by municipality to ensure that we can safely host uh, those types of ventures so uh, I just want to make sure as we talk about taxes that it, yeah. it is yeah. an appropriate one mm -hmm. I like to see too that if you're going to do business in town of Fort Mill there is a maybe a higher there are a certain Standard. set of standards mm -hmm. that you'll need to meet here instead of a lot of other communities that don't have something like this in effect and uh, there's there, there's regional jurisdictions close to us that don't have any regulations right. really about food trucks right. and, and it's a free-for-all and uh, you can find them on YouTube with food trucks blowing up and you know that there's reasons because of that and so we we want to have safety as a, a high priority and want them to come in and get inspected and and allow them to operate still and, and, and have a business uh, but do it in a safe manner and there's some wonderful food trucks that operate in Fort Mill and we're very pleased that they mm -hmm. choose to operate here right. because they do follow the rules and ensure that they protect their customers and our citizens so Good job. And Mayor, I, I just want to point out, and, and I apologize, Ms. Cook, just real quick. Um, there's, there's two drafts in your packet. One is the draft um, I called, I believe, the original draft. That was the draft that we took to the Planning Commission. We took the, the conversations of the Planning Commission and some additional conversations of staff, created the alternative draft, which is kind of what we've been discussing. So uh, if you get to the point where you would like to make a motion, if you would just differentiate between the original the alternative or, or the, original. the alternative. A couple of questions that I've got regarding it. First off, how many readings <coughs> for this to get to approval? Just one or two? This will be two readings. Okay, just making sure. Did we reach out to any of the HOAs in our community um, uh, and get their input uh, regarding this? We, uh, we did not reach out specifically at this time. However, in the communications that I've had with HOAs in the past, uh, in the dealings that I've had with the HOAs in the past, it's kind of, I took that as input to uh, put into this ordinance. Okay. Um, one request I'd like to have, and you know, it's up for discussion, is as we go from a first reading to a second reading, I think it'd be important to reach out to some of our HOAs where we're trying to help them with this and make sure that we're accomplishing that um, and making it easier for the HOAs. Um, it, it, in most conversations that we've had, um, and in any conversation that I do have with an HOA, I kind of ask, so what is your opinion? What do you want to see as far as food trucks? And they just want to make sure that they're up to date on the regulations. Um, they, they, they have not historically provided that much input um, aside from just wanting to keep up and know what the regulations are to make sure that they're following the rules and that when their citizens are requesting this that and the other that it's it's within the rules of the town so that that's been the typical thing uh, and that'll be certainly communication that we will do after uh, an ordinance is changed if it's changed 
Um, but that is that's the biggest thing that I've heard so far. And I think to your point, one of the things that would be easier for the HOAs is that they'll actually have a consistent mm -hmm. set of regulations that we don't have right now. And this isn't just an HOA driven. There are businesses yes. that bring them. There are schools that bring them, churches. You know, I think everyone having a consistent set of regulations makes it much easier. Then we'll get the feedback on whether they're happy with it or not. And, um, and I apologize. One thing this does, I mean, it puts the power to the HOA, and then the <coughs> HOA sort of gets to decide within their own subdivision how they want them to be handled versus us sort of telling it how it will happen they get to decide um, because anything on their property they they've got to be the party that comes in and requests approval to get you know the ability to have food trucks operating there so which it, that's in the original version but it looks like it's struck from the that's in version. that's in the alternate draft is reading is there any side by side differences between the two the two drafts that we could see without having actually having them side by side there um, it's it was almost a it was sort of a complete rewrite um, the original draft was almost a carbon copy of, of a, re, a regional jurisdiction okay. um, a large regional jurisdiction Rock Hill um, they've got a lot of food truck activity we thought that uh, their, their process was simple um, and um, but just in looking at it, and one good example is um, they allowed food trucks at any retail establishment of more than 100,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have one of those. Rock Hill probably has dozens of those, but we have one of those. So, so the context, you know, after considering it further, the context was just different. So the alternate draft is sort of a, a complete rewrite. Um, as far as location differences, uh, I think we added um, schools and churches, making that an administrative review. We changed, instead of just a retail establishment of more than 100,000 square feet, um, uh, just a commercial establishment, which we would consider to be like a shopping center of more than 100,000 square feet, could administratively request approval for a food truck to operate. Um, so I mean there's there's some changes like that um, and then the other big change was just sort of separating the two with the food trucks and the locations being separate sort of approval processes now with a property owner wanting to get a, approval to, to do that is there a, a, an approval process we would go through we would develop an application form um, they would apply giving us information of you know as far as the property owner, you know, where they would operate, you know, uh, we would ask questions to make sure that they can meet all the operational requirements that are in here, make sure they're safe, make sure they have the ability to park somewhere that's not going to block traffic, not going to create pedestrian lines that are out in the traffic and things of that nature. Uh, we would have to create that application form. Um, to, in, to, to ask all those questions um, but so kind of partnering off of that it leads into some of the questions I had um, number one will that process be digital and what kind of time are we going to commit to giving approval for that the process because it's left open-ended in the ordinance where's that we where's typically um, three what is this e3 page seven but there's lots of strike through, so yeah, it may be other places too. Like 20 yeah, it's 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 maybe easier just to go through the uh, clean version, which is the last. I, I just think kind of version. Chris Wolf is haunting me in the back of my head here. <laughs> of well, we need to have a commitment of a time. We can't <laughs> just <right>. say <laughs> you I need to apply. That. We need to say you need to apply, and we will give permission or denial within 72 hours, within three business days. And I think the application has to be online and a digital application. Mm. There's no reason somebody should have to come into town hall or fax in an application. Um, we should be able to do it online as much as possible. We can certainly have the ability, and we do have the ability to accept applications digitally. Um, accepting payments, you know, to the extent that there are fees at this current moment, there are not fees for this. Uh, we would take up fees in the budget process. Um, we would 
ideally have some sort of fee to pay the administrative staff for you know their time in reviewing and approving these um, at, at the discretion of council. Um, but yes, they could they could apply online, um, and we can we can definitely have that. Uh, typically, uh, our shortest time frames for for things are, are in the realm of, of ten business days, I believe, um, and that's sort of common with our level of staff that we have. Um, we can, I think, for something like this, probably aim a little lower if it's it's clear because it's it's primarily one department that's reviewing it. Um, does so, it need to go to planning commission? I mean, you've gotten on here that it could go to planning. Is it, it one or the other? I mean, so there's so if the <coughs> separation be so on, well, and there's no page numbers on the staff report. But um, if you're part of a special event, a uh, accessory to a brewery, a school, church, or large commercial establishment, those are all planning department approvals. So that's planning staff. You meet their requirements. Yes, we approve it. You're good to go. Uh, we could probably do that, you know, in, in a small time frame. If it has to go to planning commission, you have to submit early, you know, enough to get it on the agenda, and then you have to wait for the meeting. So I can't have as much flexibility on the time frame of that one as much. But uh, on the ones that are staff approval, we can we can work to put that in the ordinance and to make it a small so number. So I haven't heard what would go to planning commission. Planning commission is anything else. So if you're not at a special event, an approved special event, not at a craft brewery, not accessory to a school or church, or not accessory to a large commercial establishment, anywhere else has to go to the planning commission and has to ask the planning commission for approval to uh, operate. Okay, I'm still trying to hear why. So a special event could be a celebration of life. It could be a pool party. I, to me, a celebration or a special event could be this big. I don't understand what falls outside of the list that you provided. Um, HOA, so the, the example I have in my head is an HOA uh, and, and they're wanting to operate somewhere within a neighborhood. So. A waterside and a Massey, they have very large HOA amenity centers. So it's very easy for them to define a place for a food truck to go and operate safely and meet the requirements. Uh, some of our smaller subdivisions or, um, you know, let's assume Weibel Park had an HOA or something like that and they wanted to... Spring Branch Glen has one. Spring and, but there's not a very easily defined place in Spring Branch Glen, which is a smaller neighborhood, uh, to go and to operate. So a lot of our subdivisions, yes, we have several very large ones, but we have a lot of really little ones. So there was no like one set of regulations that could apply that we could ensure that it was going to be a safe operation for any subdivision to have a food truck. So that's why it's a case-by-case -case basis going to the Planning Commission to review and to make sure that it can be done safely. So that, that's one example. I, I just am still struggling how planning and nothing taking nothing from Planning Commission because I, I, they know a lot of what they're doing, but staff is more familiar with the roads of each of these neighborhoods and so forth and every opportunity for the approval or negotiation of whether that food truck is allowed in that one parking space versus another. Mm -hmm. I think you as staff should have a much better um, opinion of what is safe for where that should park. Let me give you another scenario. Um, I'm a homeowner and I'm having a graduation party and I have a food truck come to the house to serve all of my guests. That food truck is probably going to need to park in the road along the side of my house to serve the patrons of my house and my guests. It doesn't feel like we are taking that into consideration because they will be in the roadway. You know, is that, but they're not blocking the road. So it still would be safe. There's not gonna be a big line. They're all in the house. That happens. That's a reality. I've seen it happen many times from my front door. Um, 
I just think that we're at an opportunity where, yes, the amended text is much better than the original, but I still think there's a lot of refining that we can do for the process. We typically um, follow SCDOT regulations as far as how we handle <coughs> roadways. SCDOT does not allow the operation of food trucks within their roadways. Uh, historically, in our current ordinance, we do not allow the operation of food trucks in road right-of-ways. Uh, so if they were to park outside, you know, in the road, and it's a town road, uh, we would not allow that. So, okay. so we are going to encourage, or should we be <coughs> encouraging through this ordinance, homeowners that want to use it, or even businesses for that matter, um, to park in a driveway? So let's say <coughs> Zoo Bakery, for example, wanted to have a food truck on their property. Would we encourage them to put it actually in the parking lot area of their business rather than the road? It may, so there, there may be situations where it's just not allowed. So, I mean, if we can't define a safe place for it to be in a driveway, you know, and not be blocking a sidewalk, then it, it may not be allowed in that situation. If Z Bakery, if, if they reduce the parking below the, the parking minimums, they may not be allowed to have a food truck operate there. Um, so it's it's not intended to allow anywhere uh, uh, an approval opportunity necessarily, um, but the the last item is is sort of intended to give give it a chance, but uh, it's not saying that it would get approved. Okay. When I think of some of the businesses on Main Street, we've allowed to have food trucks in the past. We have allowed them to take parking places that they technically didn't own. Granted, we did ordinances, I believe, to approve it. Um, but if we're not allowing a business, Z Bakery, to have a food truck in their parking lots because there's not enough parking spaces, I would hesitate to do that with somebody on Main Street. And uh, the, the ones on Main Street were operating out of a, a town lots so of the town would control whether or not that occurred in the future um, or not um, you know and, and again it one parking lot with 10 spaces you you may have an opportunity to approve depending on how that parking lot is set up you could have another parking lot with 10 spaces that there's just no way to safely do it they're not going to get approved to operate a food truck whereas you know one might and, and, and i guess part of where i'm trying to get to chris is that I want to avoid you having to approve a case-by-case -case basis. Right. I mean, you've done a great job, or staff's done a great job of separating the two. And again, as we have said, I think that's a great move. But I think you're trying to over-control the location piece of it right now. And you're only looking at a small portion of it. Make a motion. Um, because I, I hear what Lisa's saying. I think we're not close enough to vote to say this is as simple a, an approach as we would <clears throat> like to have. Um, <clears throat> for those of you listening, we have a committee that takes a look at these things and we propose and provide information to Chris to draft out. <clears throat> and then when we take a look at that draft, it comes to this so that we can add our comments. And I think from the number of comments I'm looking for, um, it probably needs to go back to committee and right. we need to clean it up to the point that it is super easy to say this is what happens. Um, Mayor, would you suggest the which committee, the events committee? Um, or actually it came from the planning committee, the, plan the, the zoning committee. The planning committee. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm um, on that committee. Okay, gotcha. The other portion that I'd ha like to have us consider too is the alcohol piece. While we're calling it a food truck, um, we do have mobile alcohol vehicles, however you want to define that, um, that are operating within the town. So um, some of our breweries have their own truck um, that has alcohol that is served from it. Would that be under one the of same? them said no alcohol sales. Yeah, no alcohol right. sales, no, no alcoholic beverages shall be sold. Yeah. It's in one of those. I don't I know if it's the alternative. But that's alternative. my question. We have used a alcohol trailer at many events that the town has had. And so that's where the events follow, follow different or more restrictive or sometimes less restrictive regulations depending on the context of the event. So events are a, are a different ballgame this is kind of our starting point with an event but we we craft it and we model it based off the the needs of the event and 
you know the 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 different context of the event so yeah, so I think we're gonna have to define that it is a town sponsored event yeah. and you know again to yeah. one's point I think it needs some more definition so I'd like to make a motion that we defer new business item number three until after it can be reviewed by our planning committee thank you okay. I have a motion to defer and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, thank you. Thank you. Um, good discussion. Thank yeah. you. Just wasn't ready. Just, just not ready. Okay. Um, new business item number four, consideration to grant sewer easement for York County Utilities. Davey Brim. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, back on February 14th of this year, um, during the town council meeting, uh, Mr. Barry McKinnon with York County Utilities um, made a presentation uh, regarding the, uh, the county's Steel Creek Force Main replacement plan. And what this is, is uh, it's an installation of a 30 inch sewer pipe um, that would be replacing an existing aged 24 inch sewer pipe uh, running along Highway 21. Um, this is a three-phase project for the county. And um, phase one, if you've um, noticed, been up Highway 21 heading north from the Peach Stand north, pretty much, that's, they have been working on that right-of-way uh, and <coughs> are nearing completion of that phase. Um, since that time in February, they have been working on phase two, uh, acquiring easements from property owners that would fall within um, the location of that that sewer main so if you you can see the red line on this map um, it it turns and it, where phase one ends is basically at the walden park um, neighborhood property line and so um, phase two begins at that point and would run along their property for that neighborhood um, cross over Hare Street go through another property before it um, comes into any town owned properties so um, the town owns property um, Hare Street Park uh, and properties uh, along it and then down it runs down along the um, Riverwood and Creekside neighborhoods was Meriwether Farms when they first um, constructed and developed the properties. Um, so the York County um, utilities, when they made that presentation, there were some questions we that that council um, had for staff to go back to the county and gain more information. And through those discussions, uh, we've determined that. You know, the sewer line would go through just the property that's for the town on property is what we were negotiating or having discussions with York County about acquiring an easement across our properties. Um, through those discussions, county has agreed to um, provide uh, monetary funds in the amount of $117,161 for the right-of-way across just our properties that the town owns. Um, they have also agreed um, to put together a, um, a pretty strong communication plan to go along with that. Uh, council had concerns about making the residents that were in that nearby residents of this project aware of what was going on, why it was going on, um, how long it would last, or take to complete the, the, the phase two project. So the county has gone back and um, put together a communication plan that I provided to you um, in your, um, in, in the packet information. Um, they're gonna provide a mailer to the, this, the map indicates the neighborhoods that they would provide mailings to. Um, uh, a, just a, a one portion of this area is actually town on property others are uh, owned by um, either homeowners associations and uh, private individuals uh, and i think the fort mill school district owns another piece of property 
Um, but they have agreed to provide mailers to everyone that would be associated through the entire phase two portion of the project, which includes these other properties. Um, the neighborhoods that they would be reaching out to are the towns at River Crossing, um, Creekside Crossing, Riverwood, Old Orchard, Sharon Hills, Dogwood Lane, Walden Park, and residences on Jackson Street up to Ridge Road from Harris to Ridge. So anyone that's in the nearby vicinity of this um, right of way would be reached by mailings first. And that mailing, um, they would also provide a link to their website, uh, and that would be, they would have a designated uh, link to it uh, that would consist of frequently asked questions. Um, such as what is the purpose of the project, why the route was selected, how long the construction is expected to last, and et cetera. Um, York County is also going to provide the staff with an email and phone number that the town can communicate in our social media and our website for residents with any questions or concerns or comments to contact York County representatives and speak with them or either by email or in by phone um, so that they can ask their questions and, and gain information on that. Um, York County is also looking at, a, at various uh, media outlets. They can also go out and uh, present this uh, project as well so they can get, get the word out as much as possible. So they're through this plan, they're going to try to get in touch with um, everyone that's in this green shaded area uh, to make them aware of the overall project, not just the area that's going across the town property. Um, and so with that, town staff um, is you know requesting approval from council if you'd like for us to move forward. Yes, ma'am. I think, ma too, they agreed to grade. Absolutely, Mayor. Thank you for I bringing that, that up. an important part of our agreement. It was. And part of the discussions was, you know, the town is getting ready. We, we're getting ready to start a master trail plan, so we want to take advantage of every opportunity that may come up in the future. This right-of-way, um, they've agreed to give us an easement inside of the easement that we're presenting to them um, or would be awarding them so that we could use that as a future trail if we so, cho so choose to do. Uh, they will actually do the grading. They'll um, make it level so that it doesn't have any ponding. Uh, they will grass it, you know, seed and straw it. Um, you know, they maintain their right of way, but for the easement that we have, should we come back in the future and add some form of trail system, then we could, you know, we would maintain our portion of easement inside their easement. But that's a good benefit to the town. Absolutely, and and you know, it would be. In the future, if you look across a shaded area, um, if we have an opportunity to have a trail system down 21 and that stretches all the way to Hare Street and then to Spratt Street, um, I think that would be a benefit for the residents. Did we discuss with them the concern of the runoff along Harris Street Park and how that would be handled? We did. I had a conversation with our utilities director, um, Greg Rushing. I had him review the plan um, and because of the way the, the project was going to be uh, presented, um, graded, seeded, strawed, um, he determined there would be no impact to the uh, nearby stream and or town property, uh, our Hare Street Park. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Yes, ma'am. Council members, do you have any questions before we entertain a motion? Thank you for all your work back and forth with yes. them too. I know there was a lot that went on, a lot of dialogue, and you know, really appreciate your expertise in, in treating that. Thank you. Okay. Well. So I'll make a motion we approve new business item four for accepting the grant for sewer easement from York County Utilities. I second, second that. <laughs> a lot of seconds. We'll give it out. So we have a motion to approve uh, new business item number four and multiple motions. Mm -hmm. So with that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you so much. Um, there are no information discussion items, no executive sessions. 
So, uh, Ben, we'll start with you for anything for the good of the whole. Uh, just the, one of the first things I was thinking about the other day and reading through all these notes was just uh, thank you to the planning <coughs> department, Penelope and, and Chris, for all the works, the work that's done uh, behind the scenes. I know we kind of get the Reader's Digest version of a lot of this, but, you know, there's a tremendous amount of work and dialogue, and I just think it's important for anybody who would be watching to know the time it's taken behind the scenes, not only for what we've discussed tonight, but a lot of other things from the, that come from the committees that, you know, they're deep dives. There's a lot of things that are gone over. So when we get to this point, you know, whether we accept it or defer it, that we come back to a point when we're done with it, it's like, you know what, that's the cleanest, sharpest, best version of it that we can do that protects the town. And at the end of the day is great for the citizens in the towns of Fort Mill or town of Fort Mill. So that was just something that really struck me there. Um, another thing I saw where the Fort Mill Care Center was in, in real big need of food. So I don't know if you've ever reached out to them or donated to the care center. Um, yeah, yeah. So that'd be. There, I was gonna say, uh, <coughs> Debbie, would it overwhelm staff if we accepted it at town hall? Because I know I'm literally sitting with a box at the house, but I can't get there on right. their hours. It's Monday through Monday, Wednesday, Friday from like nine to noon. Could we do a you know quick service project um, of just collecting them at town hall? Um, I, I would imagine we could, Miss Cook. Yeah. Um, Careful, because what they posted yeah. on Facebook was they are looking for host locations, but it wasn't just the host location. They wanted the host location to transfer within their hours, oh, really? which okay. you know that that makes it a little complicated. Yeah, right. you know that we have to take somebody off the job to take the donations, which is fully worth the effort. But I think we don't have employee base yeah. to do that. We can provide a space to collect, but we'd have to have some other means. It'd be uh, you and me yeah. doing it, or you and me and you and you and me. <laughs> um, but okay. if we came up with some method of doing that, that is exactly what they're asking. They're right. asking for business locations or community locations that people that couldn't make their 9 to 12 three days a week, yeah. but they do need donations. Yeah. And, and I think that's very sad. I, I agree. I, I think we can review it and see if uh, maybe there's a partnership with someone that can, that may be interested in helping us if we collect it and then they distribute it. So mm -hmm. uh, that would be great because yeah. there's so many people that would like to give. I used to go and stack cans for them and do stuff. Mm -hmm. It's weekends, after hours. You know, people that want to give and there's no no means to do it. So um, yeah. I think in some respects it would be behoove them not to get off on a tangent, but. To, to make an after hour a, a time of the day, I think they would really benefit from that. But anyway, just food for thought. It's kind of complicated. That, right? Yeah, it's extremely complicated. Right. And the, the number of people that they've had in the past that worked was enormous. Right. But now it's just like every other business in town. Who's working? I don't right. get it. I don't know who's working. I don't think anybody's working. And it's challenging because <laughs> you can't even ship stuff because you yeah. can't confirm that. I did see somebody, somebody like with certain. the Humane Society, you can now go and have things delivered. But I think they're open right? seven days a week. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's right. the difference. So you know, we'll so keep digging. Uh, I think between yeah. all of us, we can. We'll figure uh, out something. But that's I, all I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Right. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you. Good discussion. Yeah. Alan? Uh, no, just um, you know, the it's still hot. But we're going to have a little break here, maybe like a, a preview of fall coming up, and just uh, looking forward to all the town. Uh, events coming up, you know, uh, shutting down Main Street, coming down in a couple months on the weekends, be a lot nicer than that was uh, what was in August last year, right? That was uh, in July. July, last yeah, year. It, was, it was hot. Either way you look at it, was hot. So it's gonna be nice. Looking forward to having that uh, on the weekends. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed my my shirt tonight. This is um, this is for my my one of my best friends, uh, Brandon Guffey. Um, his son Gavin Guffey passed away a couple weeks ago. Brandon Guffey's a county councilman. And uh, he was the best man in my wedding, um, and um, it, um, it it really touched uh, you know a, a lot of people. And um, one thing that came out of the, the whole thing was the phrase uh, "Tomorrow needs you." So you know if you you know you're needed, you know. And this is this is just talking to anybody that you know if you need to talk talk to somebody about anything, just just reach out and do it. Don't don't hold anything back. So um, that's all I got. A very sobering thought that I think we all should reach out and make sure everybody's okay. Lisa? Um, scary to say, but school starts Monday. Um, so, you know, we typically do this 
whether it's coming into summer or coming into school, be aware of your surroundings. A lot of people are going to be making new trips, new routes, new buses, new kids, um, new community members. And Lord help, we have two new drivers um, in the Cook household. So, um, <coughs> yeah, just be mindful. And, and the kids cringed because I did put one of those tacky yellow stickers on the back of the car that yeah. said new student or new driver. Great parents. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, and be yeah, be patient. And, and it's kind of it's for my husband as much as it is anybody else. Um, yeah, it, it's part of the reason he's making me teach them to drive because he doesn't have much patience with driving. But, um, be patient of others. You don't know what's going on uh, with the car in front of you. And just be safe as we start back to school. And good luck on a new school year. One step closer to empty nesting. Woof. Ronnie? I went by the flower, farmer's market Saturday and it was crowded. Mm -hmm. It was well attended. Uh, another thing I've noticed, what's wrong with sidewalks? People don't use sidewalks anymore. They walk down the middle of the road. <laughs> I had to dodge two sets of people this morning going to work at the golf course because they were using the middle of the road instead of the sidewalk. Crazy. I will say in our neighborhood what happens, and you see complaints on Facebook a lot, and, and not giving justice to anybody walking in the road, is a lot of the trees. So I guess the other part of it is if you're on a tree that goes over a sidewalk, make sure you're trimming it so people can walk under it. True. Because, you know, in our neighborhood, I'm dodging and doing this, and, you know, the other options, you're walking the road, and it's a lot less bobbing and weaving. The so. newer neighborhoods, sometimes they only, they, they have limbs that start here. Yeah. I don't understand that. <laughs> Trees don't have limbs down here. Hedges do. Don't get it. <laughs> but we need it here. I mean, I'm short, but I still need yeah. them at least 5'3". So, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Chris? Uh, got out of town a few days last week, and um, I got in touch with a friend of mine in Atlanta that works at Chick-fil-A corporate headquarters, and I was just wanted to meet him for lunch, and he said, well, why don't you come here and eat? Everything's free. So I have three <laughs> kids. So that's like a little raise, right, when you go. <laughs> and so it was just like – I would probably be a thousand pounds if I worked there, but everything was free. It was just like all the Chick Fil A food, you know. I guess what heaven might be like one day or something. I don't know. But <laughs> he gave us a, a tour. It was really neat. But he took us to Truett Kathy's office, who founded Chick Fil A, who died in 2014. And so you walk in, and there is the big Chick Fil A cow, and his desk is just like it was left when he passed away. And all his photos are in the background. There were photos with him and Billy Graham, and just all this cool stuff. Um, but he had his his Bible was sitting there that he read out of right on his desk. And that, that really spoke to me that someone like that, you know, they're closed on Sundays. It's a good, you know, Christian example. Um, so but that, that was neat just to kind of to see the culture there of what goes on behind the scenes and how they run the company. And, and yeah, it's a pretty, pretty neat experience. So, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a while before I'm an empty nester uh, and school is starting. So I have to set my alarm up an hour. My alarm song is Let Her Cry by Hootie and the Blowfish when the school starts back. So, um, but, uh, you know, thank you, staff, for all you do for us. Um, you make showing up here really, really good and, and easy for the most part until we start beating things around up here, right? So, uh, no, but thank you guys for everything. That's all I have. So. I did notice that I believe we posted something about new bus drivers uh, running those routes this week. I really appreciated that. Um, we've been working for so many years to get more proactive and, and be able to see things out here instead of responding to the problems. So I'd like to compliment you for doing that, Chris. That was very good. Thank you. Uh, Lisa's right. Not only, um, you know, on the sad side, school's starting, days are getting shorter, but hallelujah, football's Football on season. its way. Go Cops. So that's a good thing. Um, and two, I'd like to thank staff because I think um, new council, new year, we're, we're being aggressive at trying to work through some things. We're pushing. Um, I think that's what you, everybody wants us to do. And I'm, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable when we say, no, let's go back and try that again. Because sometimes we can't verbalize what we want right. because, we're, you know, everybody's on top of us too. Everybody wants something different. You know, it's amazing how many emails you get with things that you're wondering how do we fix that or how do we make that person happy because it's going to make 6,000 people unhappy 
So the intent is always good. Um, I think simple is always the right answer. And I appreciate the level of patience that staff has with us as we work to try to find the well, best. And we path. have always asked, give us a draft. Mm -hmm. it, it's a whole lot easier for us to make adjustments <coughs> to a draft than telling us to figure it out when we don't know ordinances. So if you give us a starting point, and that's really what we need to find that end goal. So. And to Alan's friend's loss, I don't think there's anything I could imagine worse than losing a child, um, regardless of the age, I can't imagine. Um, Fort Mills lost a couple of people that I went to school with. Um, you know, uh, we need to be kind to one another and enjoy the time that we have with one another. So thank you all. We appreciate you, and I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I make a motion for adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.